Senator John McCain is lying in state at the U.S. Capitol this morning. He died last Saturday of brain cancer. Senator McCain was diagnosed with geoglastoma, an aggressive form of brain cancer, in July of 2017. And as we say goodbye to an American hero, so many questions arise about what killed him. Joining us now is Dr. Kyle Ruffing, a neurologist from the Intercoastal Medical Group. Welcome, Dr. Ruffing. Oh, we've Thank got you. so many questions for you. What is this type of brain cancer that killed uh, Senator McCain? Well, a glioblastoma is a uh, grade four astrocytoma, which is like the category five hurricane of brain tumors. Ah. It's devastating, highly invasive, highly malignant, grows very quickly, and uh, at this point, there's no cure for it. What caused it? It's complicated, and um, like many types of cancer, it's probably a combination of things. There may be some DNA damage that occurs as we age. There may be some uh, genetic component to things. There may even be a, a virus that can uh, affect us. Mm -hmm. And um, when we get this unregulated cell growth, that's when we develop these tumors that, that are unstoppable. Mm -hmm. I have a question. With many cancers, it said if you catch it early, you know, your odds are better and all that. Is that true in this case? No. Mm. It's, if, if the pathology shows the, this glioblastoma, then the prognosis really depends on how old you are and there may be some difference as far as surface markers on the tumor because they're all a little bit different but they're they're really incurable cancers wow. had it been growing do you think in his head a long time probably not they grow very rapidly and and he really just mentioned to his doctor that he was feeling a little tired uh, maybe a little foggy and he mentioned that he was having some vision symptoms and that led to his CAT scan and then eventually his surgery and then his diagnosis. But we all feel those things sometimes. That's right. what's so scary about right. that. And most of the time that's not gonna be from a brain tumor. Uh -huh. Most of the time it's gonna be other things. And, and our odds of getting this type of brain tumor are really very small, less than 1% that we'll have brain 1%. cancer. Because I so. think we've all been worried about that ever yeah. since then. Yeah. I think everybody's been thinking that. Sure. Does, that ju does it just happen to old people? No, it can happen at any age. It's, it's more common as we age because mm -hmm. of things like DNA damage and things that we're exposed to, but it can happen to young people as well. So Is as a neurologist, when, you know, as Linda says, we all at some point feel foggy or tired or have vision issues. Do you recommend then that we do contact a doctor? Linda always says, I feel silly going to the doctor and telling them that I have something everybody feels, you know. But in this case, it was really crucial that he mentioned that. Sure. No, I think it's important to, to talk with your doctor about how you feel. And there are generally things like warning signs that, that there may be something else going on besides just you know, day-to-day -day type of things. And, right. and in, in Senator McCain's case, it was really the vision symptoms that sort of alerted his doctor to that's say, a red flag. Mm, maybe there's okay. something else that's, that's troubling him. Now, are there treatments? There are treatments. Um, most people with glioblastoma will get surgery to remove the tumor, mm -hmm. and they try to remove it as much as they can. But this type of tumor sends out little fingers and little tentacles into other areas of the brain that they can't resect, they can't uh -huh. see. Um, then people generally get radiation to the brain and that helps survival and usually chemotherapy but there are a limited number of, of types of medicine that these people can receive that show any benefit. Did Senator McCain do all of those things? I'm not sure. His, yeah, his, his records are, are classified. Most right. likely he did. Most well, likely he received radiation, chemotherapy and surgery. You have a young patient uh, that has this condition. Are there new things on the horizon to treat her? Yes, there's, there's really an explosion of research in treating these tumors. Um, and um, th this is uh, one of my patients. Um, she's a, an amazing person, Denise. And um, these are pictures of her up at Duke University where she goes to get her treatment. She is in an experimental protocol where they use a genetically engineered polio virus. Oh. And um, these photos of her, are her, of her getting her infusion into the, the tumor itself. And these are, are photos of the tumor. The, 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 these are her most recent MRI scans. The ones on the right are her last one. The ones on the left are, are more recent. And the tumor looks bigger but it actually is thought to be a good thing because they think her immune system is damaging the tumor. So oh. her immune system is, is fighting 
against the tumor and damaging it and causing the swelling. And they think that's going to help her as far as, as how long she can live with this. But there is no cure for it. There is no cure yet. There's a lot of research into some very interesting treatments involving nanoparticles, vaccines, viral delivery systems, things mm. to try to get these um, tumor cells to stop growing. Yes, well, we are hoping this research works very, very soon. Thank you Thank so you. much for all of this information. And if you want more information about glioblastoma and other health issues, go to intercoastalmedical.com.